We're here with uh, Michael Rosa, the head baseball coach. Uh, beginning of another season, coach. It's got to be an exciting time for all baseball coaches. Um, you had a chance to get outside. The weather's been great this this winter for you. Kind of talk about how the team has started off here. Yeah, it's been a unique one being outside every day. Um, we've had the opportunity really to you know, be down on the turf and um, do all of our defensive work and throw our bullpens outside and really just had to come inside only to hit up until this week and now we're down on our field. I mean, yesterday, February 14th, first day on the field. So it doesn't happen too often. I do feel like, you know, it's uh, certainly a benefit being able to just to go through some of those game simulation things. We inter-squatted the past weekend, um, you know, for two days down at MSI. So like just to get in that game rhythm. Sometimes you don't have that before opening day where you're coming right out of the gym and really don't know what it's gonna look like. So I think from a coaching standpoint, it's helped us kind of gain perspective on what we need to work on in practice a little bit more after having watched some inner squads and, and kind of you know see some of that game action. Um, and, uh, and again, now being down on the field this week, uh, it's a great way to kind of really ease into opening weekend this weekend. And um, kind of talk about like, being outside this early has got to help with things like the outfield defense um, and, and, and seeing those fly balls. Kind of how how's some of that come along your defense and, and maybe turn double plays and, and work on the field stuff? Yeah, that's stuff I definitely think is further along than it is in normal years. I mean, if you said with outfield play especially, you really can only do so much in an indoor setting. At least inside, you can hit ground balls to infielders and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're further along than a typical year. Um, you know, by mid-February, that's stuff that we really haven't worked on yet. Yesterday, we got out on the field, worked double cuts and tandem relays and stuff. I mean, that's something we're usually not getting into until March sometimes. So... I think that's been beneficial. Um, I also think that every team is going to have the same advantage now. You know, it's still a level playing field. Whether you're coming out of the gym or in our case, okay, we've been outside, but everybody's been able to um, take advantage of the great weather that we've had. So, you know, I think we'll, all teams will be a little bit further along, I think, coming out of the gate here this weekend. And uh, coming into the season, I think a lot of people would have said, looking at our roster after the uh, national championships, um, pitching and you know corner the corners were probably the two biggest concerns for you in the off season. Kind of talk about those two areas and um, what you brought in. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. I mean, losing Braden Files not he was a hundred inning guy and a hundred quality innings. Uh, Mike Frere at first, Keith Flaherty at third. <laughs> Justin Horn, Zach Wright. I mean, those were some of our big losses from last year and um, tough to replace. But I think on the mound, I do think we have more depth uh, than we had. Um, bringing in some key transfers, David Ferguson, a right-handed pitcher from Pitt, uh, who has looked really good in the fall, looked really good early on here. Um, definitely going to be most likely a conference starter for us. Josh Paulina, who uh, is... NCAA eligible, eligible as a freshman, but he played the last two years in the San Diego Padres organization. So, you know, you kind of get a guy with a professional background coming in um, who, you know, same thing, 6'6", six, six, righty, like has good stuff, power fastball. Um, and I think that's something that we were missing a little bit last year, some of that power, um, you know, and high velocity guys that, that we have now. And then, um, you know, returning Joe Sperone. I mean, Joe, you know, was eight and two, I think, as a conference starter for us last year, pitched in big games, clincher in the Super Regional. Um, you know, so having him, and he's kind of a horse on the staff. So I definitely, like, I think that stabilizes a lot of those things. He can kind of fill into that role that, like, Fosnott had last year. Um, and then, you know, adding in some of those other key guys that we brought in, um, I definitely think it was going to help with some of that. And then, you know, outside of that, Julian Costa, who was a redshirt freshman last year, like he's a left-handed pitcher that is, um, I definitely think, going to accumulate some innings. Brought in some freshmen, Ryan DeHaven, a left-handed pitcher, uh, Nick Noga, a righty, um, both guys that have looked really good early on. And for us, like a good tell is, you know, we feel like we have a pretty strong offense. So when they can kind of neutralize our offense, you know, that typically is going to match up pretty well versus our competition, especially in the PSAC. So, you know, 
as you know, two freshmen that were able to do that um, was was pretty great to see. And I think those guys are going to have some pretty big contributing roles for us. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, there's just depth around that too. So like trying to still figure out some of those roles and what guys are going to fit into is where we're at right now. Can't forget Andrew Cantwell, like you know, junior for us. Um, another guy that's pitched in big games, like. Probably his best game last year was at the College World Series versus Angelo State. And, um, you know, he's a guy that can flex in roles. He can start. He can come out of the bullpen. Uh, he's pretty durable like that. And, um, you know, again, just the experience of pitching in big games, I think, goes a long way, uh, especially when we get later in the season, some of those pressure-packed moments. So, you know, Andrew's another one of those guys that should be able to fill uh, a quality role for us. Um, and then Steve Restuccio is a two-way guy from George Mason. Um, it's definitely kind of posed to be like a back-end bullpen guy for us, uh, if not early, you know, once we get into the thick of our schedule uh, and, you know, kind of the pitching starts to get stretched a little bit more thin. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think we have good depth. I mean, there's definitely a lot of depth and, and different arm slots and everything as well. Uh, Dylan Howness, some, some Marine guy who pitched some big moments for us last year, ended up being kind of our default closer at the College World Series. And, you know, he's another guy like – pitching a lot of pressure packed moments and that's that's big for us like guys that can handle that that moment because you know we hope to be in a lot of them so another guy like can come in short relief long relief is kind of a stopper out of the pen him and Joe Sperone are two of our captains on the staff uh, so you know he brings a ton from a leadership role as well and then I forgot about Gabe Rapp also like left-handed pitcher started some big games for us last year like um, you know Gabe's another guy that I just think is continuing to make big strides um, and you know again it's just figuring out these roles where we're going to plug these guys into I mean the, the nice part is and I think it's a good problem is to have this depth and so many different like righty lefty arm slots uh, you know so I think we can play matchups a little bit more than we were able to last year and uh, hopefully that's going to prepare us um, like I said especially once we get into those common opponents in conference play now the middle of your infield seems to be set mm -hmm. um, but kind of talk about the corners and, and who might be filling in some of those roles. Yeah, so Sean's at Stoicke at short and Zach Miles at, at second or two of our returners. Um, and, yeah, really stabilize our middle, which is awesome. Uh, at third base, we moved Joe Kallick from left field to – he's going to be our opening day third baseman. And Joe's kind of a utility guy. I call him a Swiss Army knife. Like, he can he can do it all. Like, play first, third, corner outfield. He's our number three catcher. Like, you know, he can kind of do everything. So, he's going to be our opening day third baseman. And then at first base, it's kind of being platooned early on. Um, David Oliva, uh, left-hand hitting first baseman from Stony Brook, transferred in as a sophomore. Um, Sean Slowinski, right-hand hitting uh, first baseman, who's a freshman for us from Archbishop Wood, also had a really good fall. And then Julian Costa, who I mentioned as a pitcher, but he's a two-way guy. Um, so, like, all three of those guys have, you know, really different tools and skill sets a little bit. And um, I think early on we're going to be platooning that position and kind of playing matchups until, you know, somebody, um, you know, really solidifies it. But the nice part is we have some options over there. Yeah. Um, and now I know you had mentioned the loss of Zach Wright in center. Mm -hmm. um, kind of talk about the outfield a little bit. Do people slide over? Do you keep them where they are? That kind of thing. And then who fills in those? Yeah, so, you know, Luke, Luke Campbell is our right fielder, uh, returning all-region guy, middle of the order bat. Like, he'll be in right. Um, he's, you know, really made tremendous strides in the outfield and his outfield play over the past two years. Uh, and, you know, his bat is advanced at, at this point and, and certainly a threat in the middle of the order. Um, Evan Profi is going to take over the center field role uh, to start opening day. And really, I think he was ready to play last year. He just kind of was behind some guys and, and just didn't get that opportunity. And then he dealt with an injury early on last year that kind of set him back from getting those opportunities. So, you know, Profi's ready. Like, he, he's top of the order bat. Like, he's lead off, can run, kind of a pesky guy that you want at the top of the order. And just an outfield covers a ton of ground. Um, he's just such an explosive, dynamic player. So, you know, project him to be our, our center fielder. And then Corey Stouffer, who was our opening day center fielder last year, he's sliding over to left. Um, he kind of unfortunately got hobbled with a knee injury midway point through the season last year, and that kept him out for the remainder, most of the remainder of the year. Um, and now with Stouffer back, and, you know, Profi in the ground he covers in center, we can move Stouffer to left field. And um, that might be a platoon spot also. Stouffer with the lefty bat, and then Steven Restuccio, who I mentioned, the, the transfer two-way guy that we have. He's a righty bat. He's going to pitch also. 
so. So kind of getting him out there, though, he's a pretty good defender and, and has some juice with his swing. So um, gives us some right-left options as well, uh, you know, which I like. You know, having those options is good. Um, I think I think everybody knows this, but the PSAC Eastern Division is probably one of the better half divisions within the conference. Yeah. Um, you know, across Division Two, do you look at your leaders on the team who have been through that gauntlet and played those teams to kind of get some of the new guys and some of the younger guys ready for what can be a grueling conference game? Yeah, we do. Um, our captains do a great job of that. Uh, have you know certainly played in those moments, have seen it, and for our new guys that haven't seen it, they don't truly know, right? Like what that level of competitiveness is going to be. Um, we actually talked about it yesterday before practice. Just that really every team in our league is talented, and there's a lot of teams that are as talented as us. So like talent is not going to be the separator. Uh, in my opinion, it's the teams that make the plays when the pressure's on in the big spots. We were able to do that a lot last year. I felt like we rose to the occasion late in games uh, and in big moments. <clears throat> and where our uh, returners come into play with that is just showing the new guys how we practice to be able to prepare for those moments. And, um, you know, I think we've got a very tough team mentally and physically, and that's a big part of it because they're not weary. They don't shy away from the big moment. Like, they thrive in it. Uh, and a lot of those returners that have been there have showed that. Um, you know, our four captains to start, Joe Sprone, Joe Messina, Joe Callick, so the three Joes, and then J.R. Gifford, uh, you know, one of our catchers, like, all four of those guys were major contributors for us last year. So having them back helps a ton. And then, you know, you add to that leadership, like Luke Cantwell, Zach Miles, um, you know, Johnny DiMucci, you know, who's, who splits time behind the dish with JR. So we do have a lot of guys of that core of last year that are returned and, you know, are used to the competition, understand what the PSAC East looks like. And what I'll say, I think that everybody got out of last year's experience is once we got to the College World Series, you really kind of realize like the level of play in the PSAC East because while every team there was very good, I did feel like it was comparable competition to some of the better teams in the East and you know specifically that we faced uh, in the regionals, the Super Regionals. Um, talk a little bit about the, uh, the little things in baseball, like, like the base running. Uh, things like that, mm -hmm. and, and kind of your philosophy, are you take an extra base whenever you can, um, if you make a mistake on the base pass, as long as it's an aggressive one, um, you know, do you, do you look past the hat, but, uh, mm -hmm. or are you like waiting for the three run holder? <laughs> you know, what's kind of your, uh, your philosophy I, with this year's team? I, I love both of them. I love the extra base. I love the three run homers. Uh, so, you know, it's blending the two. Um, we talk about having an offense, um, you know, that can kill you by a thousand cuts. So, you know, we can take, you know, stretch a single into a double, steal third base, score on a wild pitch, but also, yeah, leave the yard with two runners on base and two outs at a time too. So, you know, it's the ability to kind of do it all. Um, we spend every day at practice, we spend time on base running. That is a big part of our system. Um, and we talk about being just reckless uh, or aggressive, not reckless with it. So while yes, you have to accept that there are going to be some mistakes and you are going to get thrown out, especially early in the year. The goal is that you can kind of work through some of that stuff so that by the time conference play comes, you're hitting your stride and guys have a good sense of how the base running system works. Uh, fortunately, with a lot of returners in the, lot, in the lineup that already did it last year, like they're pretty comfortable with how we do things there. But uh, yeah, really, it's just to apply as much pressure on the opposing team's pitcher and defense as we can. And that's really like what our whole system is built around. If we can apply the pressure, you know, at some point there's a breaking point, uh, and that's usually where we can start to tip the scale into our favor. Um, so, you know, it's a blend. I mean, you know, we certainly lost some power, you know, with, with Mike Ferrer you know, graduating last year and Keith and, and Zach Wright, um, you know, and, and some of our home run guys. So, you know, we got guys in our lineup this year that can, you know, certainly leave the yard. I do think we have a dynamic offense where we have a lot of speed as well. So, like, just, you know, split the gaps and run. We're going to leave the yard when we can, but that's not necessarily something we try to do, you know, or talk about. That's more so just kind of a, a byproduct of having a good approach, good swing, like how we train it and, and all that kind of stuff.
And so now I, I guess I have to backtrack a little bit. I don't want to forget about the catching. Mm -hmm. uh, Gifford and Demucci, two very good uh, guys there back there uh, platooning. Yes. Kind of talking about what each one of them bring. Where's Where's JR strength? Where's Mooch's strength? And um, you know how do they complement? Yeah, so my hardest job, I think, is figuring out which one of them is in the starting lineup on a given day. Because truly, I think on any team, either of those guys is a, is a number one catcher. We literally have two number one catchers behind the dish. And both of them have a different skill set. So, you know, defensively, um, your JR is very mature, um, manages the pitching staff very well, uh, has a good understanding and, and baseball IQ and, like, sense of calling pitches. Um, you know, he's a good, good catch, like block and throw guy, um, and just really has a presence behind the dish that I think kind of the other fielders see and feed off of. Um, offensively, like he's got juice in his bat, and he's a guy that can leave the yard at any time. Uh, Tamucci, you know, same thing, another like high IQ guy behind the dish, plus catch and throw guy. Uh, his arm strength is really advanced. Uh, he can neutralize our opposing team's running game very easily. Um, and then, you know, offensively though, like he's he's a speed guy. He's our second fastest runner on our team, which you typically don't see from a catcher. So like he's a threat on the bases. He can bunt, he can run. Uh, and he also has juice. Like he'll leave the yard randomly and um, he is a threat there. So like he's a very dynamic player too. Uh, so you combine the both of them and, and really we just, we just try and play matchups. Like certain guys handle other guys on the staff well, um, you know, so sometimes that's the matchup is, you know, we got one guy Guy catching you know for one specific pitcher sometimes it's an offensive matchup like you know one guy just you know matches up better against the starter we're going to see from the other team so you know that's a platoon role um you know they are close to splitting time it's, it's tough with the three game weekend series because you, know, you really can't split them in that moment we're going back to the four game series again next year uh, so you know if we were four game series like i would say they would each catch two games of, of every weekend but um um, you know, right now with the three-game series, it's a matchup thing, and then the midweek, same thing. But um, it's just really nice to have two catchers that you can rely on, uh, and that brings so much to the to the team. Um, and they impact the game, even if it's not in, in the stat line. Like both of those guys, they can impact the game, which is how they receive, how they call pitches, all that kind of stuff. So I know Mooch last year came to you and said, "Coach, I can play second if you need to." Is that yeah. an emergency thing for you this year, or do you think he's kind of a, a backup infielder in a it's, you know in a situation? Yeah, he is a backup infielder. Um, Does he own a, an infield glove? He has an infield glove. Yeah. So he so he played second at LaSalle the year before before he transferred, and uh, that's kind of how I just I wouldn't have otherwise known that he played infield. So we basically just told him last year, like, hey, anytime we're taking BP and you're not catching bullpens or hitting, just go out to second base and take fungos. And that's really how it started. And then the one day we were going to Citizens Bank Park and I think Miles was sick. Mooch was going to start behind the dish that night. And then he went to second. And then it was like, bam, in a regional or super regional. I forget which one it was. We had to do like a double switch. Mooch ended up having to go to second base randomly and like made a play in a big spot. So like, um, it's the same thing. I mean, he is super athletic and that's the thing about Mooch. Like he can go to second, short or third and I would feel very confident with him out there. The thing is he's so good behind the plate that like you don't want to take him away from there unless you really have to. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks Mike. Thank you.